Today, I am going to be showing you what I do to every single model I print on my resin printers. And if you're not doing this, I promise you, you are wasting a ton of resin. So let's get into the video and let me show you what I do to save a lot of resin. So when I first started getting into resin 3D printing, I just started taking my models, loading them on the bed, hitting auto supports and hitting print. And when I got these things off, I was like, oh my God, these things are so heavy. And I realized I was just wasting resin. I wasn't hollowing my prints because there's no reason to be printing a solid model. And if you're printing just solid models right now, this is the video for you because I'm going to show you how I hollow my models in Chit U Box. So I'm going to jump over to Chit U Box. I'm going to show you how we can save resin and hollow those 3D prints. So let's go. I am right now running the most current version of Chit U Box, version 1, 9.3. And if you don't know how to update your Chit U Box, all you got to do is go to Help and then right here at the top, check for updates. So I'm gonna bring in a model, and all you gotta do is click on this blue icon where it says open file. So once you import your model, it'll go ahead and plop itself right here on the build plate. I'm actually using this awesome chibi Ewok that I got from my 3DXM Patreon. When you check this bar to your far right here and scroll down, this actually shows you the slices of your model, so you can kind of cut it away and see how it'll actually 3D print it. And if you notice, if I stop in the middle here, you see this dark blue. And this dark blue means it's solid. So this is a solid plane right here that it's going to be printing. And if I slice this model, and if you look over here to your right after you've sliced it, you can actually see all of the preferences and all of the specifications of your actual print. So it'll tell you your machine, then it also shows you your resin, and I have EPAX hard resin, and then it'll show you your volume and your weight. So I'm using 128 milliliters for this model. And then the nice thing is, when you're putting in the type of resin you're using, you can say how much the bottle of resin costs you, and then it'll give a price calculation of how much your print is actually going to cost. So this print right now is going to cost me $6.37, or $0.38. Cents. And it'll take 12 hours, 35 minutes, and 8 seconds to actually print. So I'm going to go ahead and hollow this model. And all you do is you click this little button right up here, and if you hover over it, it'll show you what it's going to do. That's kind of the nice thing about Chit U Box. It'll show you little examples when you hover over each icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click Hollow, and then this drop down will show. And there's a few options when it comes to hollowing your models. You've got your wall thickness, and that is how thick of a wall it's actually going to produce. So how much it's going to carve out inside the model. And the wall thickness is measured from the exterior of your model going inwards. So this would be two millimeters thick. And I typically stick to two millimeters. If you want your prints a little more bulky, then you can definitely crank this up and go higher. Then you have your precision, and honestly, when it comes to precision, I've never been able to tell a difference between 10%, 50%, or 100%. It's supposed to make it a lot smoother, but honestly, I, I've looked at them all, and here I can show you an example of what I'm talking about. Here's 10%, here's 50%, and here's 100% precision. And if you can tell, not a whole lot changes. There's some little polygons that move in the feet, but when it comes down to it, I've noticed that if I keep it at 50%, it renders it pretty quickly and slices it, and I just leave it at that. So the last real setting you have is infill structure. It's set to none. So if I turn this to grid 3D, then you're going to be able to see an infill density. And this is just like FDM printing, if you're familiar with that. It creates an infill inside your model. So if I have it at 30 and it hit start on this,
it creates this grid inside, and this is essentially a structure to support the inside of your model. And you're probably wondering, why do I need an infill for this if it's hollow? Because sometimes you need an infill or some type of supports on the inside to print properly. But for this model, I don't really need an infill. But I can show you at a 30% right here. And this is actually a 15%. And you can see that the grid is a lot bigger. And then obviously if I go to a higher percent, say let's say 75, it's going to use a whole lot more resin. And you see that is a lot. That's almost a solid mass. And this is not going to save you resin. So infills, in my opinion, is something I don't use a whole lot. This is the trick that I use to avoid using infills. So I will turn off my infill structure and I will go back down to a 50% precision, hit start, and now I have my model hollowed. So what I do is when I'm supporting, so if I go over to my supports, I'll get some heavies, heavy supports, click it right here, and I'll go up underneath it, and then I'll do this. I'll actually start from the very top and work my way down and say, if there's an area that really needs supporting, I'll go ahead and just click on it like this. And I will support the inside of my model. Now, this doesn't really need it right here, but I'm just kind of showing you. And what that does is this. So you can see that it actually is creating supports inside the model. So you don't actually have to only create supports outside your model, because you can see there's no supports right here. So it goes all the way through the bottom and connects to itself and creates that support structure. Doing it this way, you're going to save a whole lot of resin. And this is the way that I prefer. Now there has been some rare circumstances where it would just take so many supports, I go ahead and I just use the infill in Chit U box. So this is the first step of hollowing your model. Now we have another step which is vitally important. Before we get into the next part of this, I just want to say thank you to my new patrons this month. And if you want to join my Patreon, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord servers, as well as being able to chat with me and others about everything 3D printing. I also share exclusive tutorials just for my patrons. The exclusive videos that I'm working on right now is I'm showing the process of how I'm painting these awesome Chibi Ninja Turtles. So I hope to see you in my Patreon, and let's go ahead and get back to this video. Okay, now the second part, and this is super important. After you hollow your model, you have to be able to drain out the resin that is left inside the model. And that is where we come up here. Dig hole. We have to add holes to it so we can properly clean out the inside. So there's a few reasons why you need to dig holes into your model to be able to get inside there. One of the reasons is you basically have a pressured chamber in here. So if your model actually gets hot, that air can start to expand and break your model. The second reason, there is uncured resin on the inside here. So you need to be able to get that resin out. So what we're going to do is dig some holes in this to where you can't see them. And this is the key. When you're actually doing this, you want to find areas, typically the feet or where it's connecting to the base, you want to add some type of hole. For me personally, I like to get as big of a hole as I can. That way it's easy for me to get alcohol in there when I'm cleaning it and shake it around and clean out that resin. So what you want to do is click up here to dig hole. Now you have a few different options. You have circle, hexagon, or square. And pretty much what that is, is the shape of the hole. So you can see this is circle, this is a hexagon, and wait for it, I bet you're not gonna guess. Yup, and that's a square. So these are the different shapes that you can make when you're actually making a hole. So you can see that this is at nine millimeters, and then if I go and change the size to say two, then it's going to make a smaller hole. So this is really just the diameter of the hole. Then you have the depth. Now the depth is very important. 
because you want it to be bigger than the thickness of your model. So I have mine at two millimeters of thickness and this is at 4.5 millimeters. So all you do is click add hole and then this will show up for you. So I'm going to switch this to circle first and then I'm gonna increase this back up to nine and the depth at 4.5 and I'm just going to click right here in the middle. And after I hit add hole, I'm gonna click here in the middle. And you see there, it made a nice sized hole for us. Then I can go over here to the other foot and I can realize that this is just a little too big. So I can go to the size again and bring that down and I can click and there we go. It's just that easy. And then what I would do on this model, I would bring it down a little more and then I would put a hole right here. And there we go. So that way we can actually get alcohol in here when we're cleaning our model and wash out all of that resin that is left. Now the other thing that you can do is you can keep the hole. So if I undo this last hole I just made, I click this right here, keep the hole. When I click this at the bottom, it's gonna go ahead and cut that hole out. But if you notice right here, the piece that I just cut is right here for me. So I could technically print this and try to plug this hole back up. And this is very helpful for when you have areas that are not underneath the model. So say if I had to pick a spot, like maybe I would pick on the back of his head and add a hole there. So if I added a hole right here so I could get drainage, it would add the hole and then it would give me the actual plug right there. And if you notice, it is a little tapered, so it does fit back in there. I have used this a few times and I've had to sand this a little bit, but for the most part, it does work out really well. But when it comes to me, I personally just put in a really small holes and then just fill it with plastic putty. And then you have dig hole continuously. This basically means it's gonna keep pushing all the way through whatever the depth of your hole you're making. I always keep this checked. The only time that this can kind of hurt you a little is let's say if I have this really long, like my depth is super long, and if I'm making a hole right here at the toe, so if I dig a hole straight through this toe, you can see what it did. It went continuously through. So sometimes this is good to keep checked off if you don't want to go through your model. So hopefully now you're going to be able to print your models with a lot less resin. So I hope to see you guys in the next video, and if you have any questions, leave them below for me.